Oh, good evening, to everyone. <clears throat> I think the game came out the way we had uh, anticipated it. You know, our tactical agreements, we, we knew that one, uh, if we can press them from the top and put some pressing traps on certain individual players, we can benefit. And uh, in our analysis, we also saw that they consider a lot of goals in the early stages of the match. Uh, that's why we were hiding a lot of pressure beginning of first half and also beginning of second half. Because we, we knew that they, they are prone to making a lot of mistakes in, in those moments. But uh, what was more important for us was to guard against their, their transitions from defense to attack because they are very quick, which uh, was unfortunate for us to concede the goal that we considered because we knew that. Uh, and transition, they are very dangerous, and our counter pressing was not proper. Again, it was from a situation where we were already facing their last line of defense, and we made a mistake, and they capitalized on that, and they fought for the space behind the defense. Our rest defense was not one of the best, and we did not break the press when we realized that they might be looking for the space behind, because we did not have counter pressing players around the board when, when we lost position. But uh, <clears throat> credit must be given to our boys. I think they worked very hard in making sure that they minimize a lot of transitions because you know when you're playing against parents, if you make the game to be back and forth, back and forth a lot, you, you are bound to, you are putting it into a contest. And once it's a contest, it's a game that they are more comfortable with and they can punish you from, from that game because it becomes mainly more accidental than anything else because no one is clinical in keeping the ball and making sure that they do not have uh, momentum in their transitions. And I think we did that very well, We're more composed in our build-ups, frustrated them a lot with uh, the movement of the ball. Uh, unfortunately, when you don't take your chances, then you, you make the game to go into a contest because from the chances we created first half, we could have buried the game at that point, but when you don't take your chances at a certain point, they get a, a, a silly goal. And from that goal now, the game is back into a contest and the anxiety you know, starts to creep in because you, you think hey, the chances that we, we missed, maybe they're going to come back and bite us. We start making more mistakes. There was a moment where there were too many transitions and it looked like they are, they are on top of us. But again, we, re we regained our, our confidence and composure and started playing again. But I think the game came out the way we had planned it. I do believe we could have easily scored more than eight goals in this match, to be honest. If you count the, the chances that we created first half that we did not take, and you count the, the number of penalty calls that I really believe were penalty calls, I think three or four, uh, the game could have been different. But we appreciate the result and we thank everybody in the team from the players, the ones that were at home, the ones that were in the stands, the support that we are getting from that group, the technical team and our support staff, they are working very well. Everybody is working hard. The medical department is bringing players back. We don't have too many players injured at this stage. The support staff is doing their best to make sure that the team is focusing on the performance. And the administrative staff in the team has, has really done tremendously well. And I hear the, the support that comes from our supporters as well. The, the Yellow Nation is forever behind us. It's a little bit tough for them because they are not able to come and watch the team. But I think everything is coming together. And we must also thank our president and the board for affording us the opportunity to work in this club and supporting us with the resources that we have because not many teams would have substitutes like Shompu Kikani, substitute like the Sedi Kapinga coming into the match at a later stage. So that is a proper teamwork, uh, where all departments are really coming together and making the team to look good. And I really appreciate that. The coaches that I work with, they're working very hard. Our analysts, they are really giving their best. Uh, I even made mention of Coach Wendell, the goalkeeper coach, today with Marcus, because our goalkeepers have really done very well. And we never really give credit at times to these people. But it's important that we must always acknowledge everyone from the team because everybody is really pulling together and it's looking good. Good evening, coach, and congratulations on the win. Coach, looking at, you know, some of the performances that you've put out in the NetBank Cup, would you rate this as the most clinical performance against the top team? 
I wouldn't really say it was the most clinical, but uh, what, what becomes more interesting to me at this stage is the confidence and the composure and maybe a stronger conviction from our team to play the type of football that we want to play. Because at times you would have panic buttons and as a supporter or somebody who is sitting at home, you'd be scared and say, hey, these people, what are they doing? Why, why they are trying to play from the back? And you are trying to make sure that we minimize the mistakes and the accidents of the ball coming back because on transition, the opponents are very dangerous. The team is growing in stature, but uh, the, the fact of the matter is we have performed very well. Even against Stellenbosch, we had a very good performance. And the game against Polo, I mean, you can say whatever I want to say, but for me, that was the most clinical performance that we gave because we wanted to finish the game early and we finished the game early. First half, in the first 30 minutes, we're already leading for it. And that is what, when you are having a program like ours, you should consider as very clinical, but take nothing away from the performance of today. Everybody worked very hard. Our players are respecting that our tactical agreements and they are doing very well to make sure that whatever that we put in place and as a plan or a strategy for the match, they, they try their level best to attach themselves to it. And that as a coach is always encouraging. Um, coach, congrats on the win. Uh, coach, I just wanted to find out, obviously from a neutral point of view, the, the, the first half was quite entertaining, but second half, Sundowns, from a Sundowns perspective, the, the game, you, you took it up a gear. I'm just keen to hear what, 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 what exactly changed uh, because, <clears throat> I mean, as I said, the first half was, was still quite entertaining, but it just seemed like Sundowns were just on another planet in, in the second half. Yeah, man, the challenge that we, maybe the goal that we considered made us to, to respect the game because at times uh, players tend to forget what the game is all about. We had made them aware of the challenges of losing possession, of not playing uh, into areas where there's less possibilities of transitions or counterattacks, trying to go into the wide channels, finding Tapelo a little bit more, finding Motiba a little bit more instead of trying to go into the traffic. And I think that's that's how we, we managed to score the goals that we scored second half because we started to, to use our width a little bit more and they tried to play with a back five at some point with Hoto playing as a wing back on one side and Mark on the opposite side. Then it gave us a little bit more chance to play in between on the outside of their central midfielders in the half spaces with Nkulisi and Lebu, with River responsible for the switches from either side. And uh, that quality is very hard to, find, to come by where you've got a midfielder that can easily play with the left and find and find the, the, the right back. And you can also easily play with the right and find the left back. It, it makes our job easy, more especially when you play against a low block. And I think that's where the goals came from. And maybe a little bit more patience and uh, uh, in taking care of the ball and making sure that we don't give away possession easily because Pirates is the most dangerous team in the league on transition. And I think that is one area of our game that maybe improve in leaps and bounds and our players were a little bit more cautious because we had warned them that we do not want this game to go into a contest. And to be honest, we, we had told them that it's a game that can be a four or five nil game. If they play with a lot of composure, they play with a lot of patience, they play with a lot of width and uh, we don't lose too many balls. And when we started doing that better, that's when we started to look good. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, Fatu. Uh, good evening, Coach. This is just an extension from uh, what you said in terms of uh, there's still aspects that you guys need to improve. But, Coach, maybe maybe to some might be a bit arrogant. And also for me, um, uh, please try to educate me. I mean, your football is variant. You can go long, you can go short. There's triangles, there's always runners off the ball. The players looks like, you know, they tactically astute. They understand what you want from them. There's also the technical gifted players. There's players that still need to come in. When you say you need to improve, coach, what is it that you need to improve? Because this looks like it's a machine that keeps on improving game in, game out. Thank you. If if we, we were a well-oiled machine, we would not have had so many counter-attacks in this match. We've lost too many balls. And uh, I think I, I was talking about this even beginning of the season, that it's one area that as a coach, I, I don't find joy in, in players losing possession cheap because I know when you lose possession, you're exposing 
your limitations defensively and you are challenging your team physically more. I, I think that is one area of our game that for me still has to improve a lot because I still believe at times we become casual and we make silly mistakes technically, not mistakes that are forced because opponents are putting you under pressure, but a lot of unforced errors that result in 10 overs. If you can check the goal that we considered, we were in there checking that we already had a chance maybe with a Peter receiving the ball and making sure that the pass he plays to Mshishi is, uh, is more precise, he would not have considered the goal. But in our attacking play, there's also some elements and some runs that we are demanding in our triangulation. We, we, we've got expectations of trying to break the line and create more problems in the last line of the defenders by with the eights taking the spaces, maybe at times between the center backs and the full backs, and the tens taking those spaces to try and unlock or dislocate center backs into wrong positions so that when we come back, we can have a better possibility inside the box. And at times we don't do that. We are prone to playing fit, even when there are possibilities to try and make life a little bit difficult for the opponents and to force the other line to be, to be caught in wrong defensive positions. There's still so much. And again, we are not shrewd enough. We, this is the same team that created so many chances against Chipper. Uh, on Monday, but how many goals did we score? We struggled to score as many goals as we could. So there will always be elements of our game that must improve. And remember, we we are also using these games as a preparation for Champions League. And we are all, we are a very unfortunate team, to be honest, at times, because if you check Black Leopards with, that we played against, they had one chance, the one shot at goal, and they managed to salvage a throw out of nothing. Tina, we make so many mistakes and miss so many chances, but people have got a tendency of getting one chance and scoring cheaper midweek. They, they got one chance and scored. So it's always going to be important for us to stay more focused because for whatever reason, teams that we play against don't miss as much as we miss. And that creates a lot of problems for us. Okay, the question I'm coach will be that you are playing a TTM on Sunday. The by team is unpredictable. At the same time, you are fighting for the league. So, when I'm playing Pumuz, I'm going players for this match. For the game and the league, since now, Kony League foot will quagle and then attempt to find a new I do not think we will we will rest uh, in, in any player for this for this coming matches. The reason why we played the team that we played at this game is that is because. At the back of our minds, we're already looking at these three, four matches that are coming, which was cheaper Pirates, potentially Chakuma, or Marisbeck, if we did not go through. And also after that, uh, a possibility of, of going to Amazon. And so that's why we, we, we took a risk of not playing most of our key players because we thought we could still get something from that match without uh, most of the players that have been playing regularly. So we believe the group that we have it is very important for them to, to really give their best shot in the next five matches, because the next five matches can be very crit critical. Maybe they can even decide our season. So we, we will not be hoping to rest anyone. Uh, I, I don't think we, we can think like that now. All these matches are very important to us. Um, coach, um, obviously looking forward to the game against TTM. Um, do, do you anticipate maybe TTM will be a bit more of a tight uh, affair, having just beaten Pirates 4-1? Uh, <laughs> Not many teams can beat Pirates 4-1. So do you anticipate maybe a, a much more tighter affair in that fixture, uh, seeing that um, it, it just gave uh, most of the league a bit of a warning that uh, Sundowns, because Obviously, you guys scored 4 1, but honestly, you could have scored uh, bucket loads of goals today. So, do you anticipate maybe a, a much more tighter affair um, in regards to the, the fixture against TTM? Thank you, coach. If they decide to sit back, I think they will make the game very easy for us. We, we, we played against them and they started that habit of going backwards and it gave us a chance to be able to punish them. Uh, if I was them, I would uh, take the game to Sundowns because we have nothing to lose. And I, I think their coaches are, are aware that 
when you're playing sundowns, you, you better give it your best shot. And for me, the best advice I can give to, to any team at this stage is why sit back? Because even Paddles tried to sit back and played with five second half. And that's when they considered a lot of goals when they played with five at the back. So the only thing I can tell you is that uh, TTM is one of the most awkward teams uh, in the league. I believe they've got some very interesting attacking players. Uh, it's unfortunate that they are a new team and nobody would give them as much respect. And maybe now they have not found their feet because there's been a lot happening within their team. But in terms of playing personnel, they've got some very, very dangerous players. And we know for a fact that if they can come and turn it on and want to come at us, we will really have a lot of problems. But it's up to them what they decide on the day. But if I was in, in their space, I would, I would say I've got nothing to lose. Let me go on out and, and go to Sundowns toe to toe. Maybe there is something you can get out of that because when you are sitting back, you concede goals without playing. It does not help the image of the club. And I think their coaches are smart enough to consider really uh, coming and pressing us from the top and really giving it a shot. And it's a cup match for that measure. They know they, 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 they've got nothing to lose. So it's not going to be an easy game for us. I can tell you now, that even the last match that we played against them was not easy. And I'm even scared of them if they come to us, to be honest, because I know how dangerous they can be. Thanks, Fatu. Uh, Coach, uh, I know you've spoken about how you don't like losing. Um, as defending champions of, this, uh, of the Nedbank Cup, how much do you guys not want to give this trophy back? We don't want to give any match away. Uh, it's never really looking at the trophy or looking at anything. Uh, I wish you can see the whole technical team when we're playing a friendly and we are not playing well because I'm fortunate to be working with the coaches that also have the mentality that I have because we all don't like to lose matches. And be it it's a cup match, be it it's, it's net bank cup or what, we, we just don't want to lose. And, we will always give our best shot in every game. And I do not want to create an impression as if there is something that we say differently to the players on a particular match. We always want to win a match. That is why we always put specific tactical agreements as to what we think the opponents are strong at, what are our opportunities there, what we think they are, are the threats, and what, what is it that we need to do to try and exploit some of the challenges that the team might have. And we put that for every match because it's very important for us to know every player with, within the team that we are going to play against. And we, we work very hard in that space. And I really want to give credit to all the guys that are working. Uh, Coach Tsapang from Sokala Duma. I mean, we, we've seen glimpses of brilliance um, from uh, Kapinga. Uh, I just wanted to check from you in terms of him breaking into that starting lineup. Is he in any way close, just what more does he need, maybe? I know the quality that's already there with guys like Zwane, Serino, but just what more does he perhaps need to break into that starting lineup and play there regularly? To be honest with you, the boy is very close. He's working very hard uh, in his offensive game. But one area that we, we fight with him a lot, but he's improving, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this with all the humility, He's improving a lot in, in his uh, defensive play. He, he never used to, to understand the value of counter-pressing. He never knew the value of maybe pressing from the top and working very hard to, retain, to, to, to regain possession. And our team is a very high octane team. We, we, we put a lot of effort and energy in making sure that we, 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 as part of our team personality, we want to dominate the ball. We want all the stats, the stats in possession to, to favor us in terms of penetration to favor us. We want to dominate the field. That is jewels, worn, everything. We want to make sure that we, we, we dominate in all these aspects. And offensively, Kapinga probably is one of the top players that we can have, uh, but his defensive game still needs some attention. But at the moment, he is very, very close to breaking into into the first team. And if he has not broken, to be honest, because we gave him a game against uh, Polo and City to start, and uh, he performed tremendously, scored some very good goals, and unfortunately got injured. He had the hamstring after that. 
which is what has derailed him again to, to go and, and go back to the two because it's very difficult at Sundowns to, to just walk in into the team. Look at us now. Ricardo Nascimento is outside, not playing, because he, he was suspended in the CAF Champions League and we played other players and they performed well. How do you then take out those players because now he is no longer suspended? Life at Sundowns is, is, is not only difficult for, for the coaches, but it's also very difficult for the players.